like leader for the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdekanu, like Yoruba nation agitator Sunday Igbohu, the trial for both men will resume today, one in Abuja, one outside the shores of Nigeria and in a Beninese court. For Sunday Igbohu, the Nigerian government seeks his extradition. His legal counsels have their hands full trying to stop this, while a Beninese court seating in Cotonou is asking the Nigerian government to provide whatever evidence it has against him. Meanwhile, the Olubadon of Ibadan land, Obasali Adetunji, has sent a delegation to Cotonou to observe the proceedings of today's court case uh, involving Sunday Igbohu. Sunday Igbohu was declared wanted early this month after his home was raided by operatives of the Department of State Services. Now, the Nigerian government is accusing him of allegedly trafficking in arms and inciting violence capable of causing social disturbance. Uh, joining me right now is rights activist and political analyst Razak Ulukoba, as well as public affairs analyst Dotun Ojon. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank, Thank you, you for morning. joining us good morning. <laughs> on good TVC to be Breakfast. Here. Very good to have you gentlemen here. Now, I believe we have been following this case and developments. We saw the proceedings that happened on Friday and, you know, the second proceeding will be happening today for Sunday uh, at uh, the Beninese court. And the issue, like we pointed out, is that uh, the, he is being accused of uh, inciting violence that could result in social disturbance and causing disunity in Nigeria and then also uh, alleged to have been trafficking, illegal trafficking in arms. And uh, his legal team were unable to convince the prosecutor that their clients had no case to answer on Friday. And we're wondering if they will be able to do that today. But before then, can Nigeria justify the extradition of Sunday Adeyamo Igboho himself? Looking at the fact that, as many have said, there is no case against him. There is nothing legally to show that he has a case to answer, basically. Well, well, let's start like a political analyst, a political scientist. Mm. First and foremost, uh, Sunday Igboho knew that he's going to go to this point. As someone agitating for his people, he knew... He knew? You think he, he knew? He would know as an, active, as an agitator. If you read history, you might have looked at the experience of other people. When you do this kind of thing, it's likely to get to this point, and you have several alternatives available to him. And the government also knew that once they have gone to his house, security analysts will have put it on the table to dissect it. That he has two options. It's either you go underground, or you flee the country and continue his agitation. So it's normal for Sunday go either he use a password that is not his name, and I use his own password, got it through, through, through another means. The, but but his, the, his counsel is saying that he didn't acquire an illegal passport, that he had the Nigerian passport. What scenario? What scenario? But that he went to Cotonou, that's the uh, Republic of Benin, mm. through the back door, mm. which he agreed. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying, that uh, those are ingredients of uh, this kind of struggle. Mm. And it is not new to what he has, to anybody. Right. Yeah, it's only me young people who talk on social media that they have to go and, if you want to participate in politics, you have to go and read about political history very well. Fide did it. Mandela did it. Tabo Mbeki was with us in Nigeria when he was doing similar thing mm. in South Africa. How did he get there? He didn't use a South African passport. So mm. it is part of the procedure for struggle. And the government knew that uh, he may want to leave the country. So what Benin's government will know in their own mind is that uh, it's bigger than whether someone has used their own passport or not. It's bigger than that. The negotiation going on now is what we must focus on. Nigeria may have a lot of good uh, uh, negotiators, you know, because what did we negotiate with Kenya that brought Kano back? Mm. It's not too like I And we, we, some of the we should also realize that uh, when it comes to issues like this, the question of uh, international law may be deficient. Mm. We have to bear that in mind already, so that if you want to accommodate uh, the question of law or law, we have to, there must be preparation for it to know that uh, it may be brought back. Mm. What Benino's government is just waiting for is for Nigeria to speak the right language, the mm. proper concession that they made. Countries will negotiate. Mm. When sign, uh, uh, someone wants to, in the 50s, there were, there were people that were called the Mayweathers. They were crushed by the American government. And um, Nigeria will cite that example, if we are to be America that is doing this, uh, like Benin Republic. British government will also do that. You remember what they did to the Scottish leader? Mm. The same thing. 
the islands, uh, Irish, Irish uh, leaders, people. So we have to prepare the mind of Nigeria that what is happening is normal procedure for, and you know, government know what they are doing too. Mm. They have analyzed it. They know that uh, it is going, going to come to this. They will want to bring him back by any means possible. Necessary, any means possible. Any government in the world want to do that. That uh, legal or illegal? Legal or illegal, illegal. They will want to bring them back. And we have to keep our that, mind. We and have knowing to that our mind. the international community is watching, stemming from what to, happened from Imam Dikanu's case. Or what has come to that? Have you mm. been sanctioned mm. about that? I'm talking like a political scientist now. I'm right. not talking as, as if I'm a legal person. I'm not talking like a as a lawyer. So, for anybody, our right were denied during the, the, during the military. The question of right will be suspended. So, when it comes to breaking up of Nigeria too, some rights, Nigerian government will suspend some rights. So, if you are interested in joining the locomotion that is going on, we have to prepare your mind mm. that that are right you may no longer have. So, right. and for something go to to attempt to go out with that passport, it's a normal procedure. That he has broken any law, he's trying to smuggle that. What will he have done? He will, is, so two things are available to him. Is that he will go underground? Or he will try to flee the country to continue his campaign. So we are still passing through some historical process that is not strange to people like us who follow political trend in the country. Let's come to you now, Dr. Wanjo. What do you see or what do you think could happen and what concerns do you have with the way government is handling this case, bearing in mind that the interna international community is watching as well? <laughs> I just want us to um, suspend the aspect of um, the international community watching because Why? Um, uh, it, that has always been the phrase and it has not really generated anything significantly positive when it comes to issues like this. Mm. I think the major issue because um, a, a philosophically in Yoruba land, they say a wise man may be forgiven for a lot of things, but not when he forgets when the rain starts beating him. Mm. So, as a nation, I think the first question we should ask ourselves is, how did we get here in the first place? We should not have been talking about Igbo. Igbo should not be on the front pages of our newspapers today, if the basic things have been done from the very beginning. Mm. There's th this issue of insecurity that crept into the community. And government must get to a point where they will understand that project execution is, no more, is not... Uh, um, more important than perception of activities. Mm. So when you are executing a project, for example, and in your mind you are thinking, I am doing well, you must also understand the place of perception. People have the perception of this government when it comes to um, uniting the nation is really very bad. A lot of people think that the government is not doing enough to unite the people. And when the security um, crept in, let's, let's do the analysis from 2015. Mm. When President um, Buhari came on board, he tackled Boko Haram, at least in 2015, there were phrases of um, technical defeat and all that. But everybody saw that 2015, there was actually a huge blow that was dead on Boko Haram. You will remember Ezazaki, who was causing a bit of an issue within his community. The government went after him. But when it came to the issue of headsmen attack in the south, the government did not do much. This is what led us to where we are. So the injustice in the community was a major factor that I think mm. we cannot just be addressing some of this issue without asking ourselves this basic question, how did we get here? So it's not even a matter of whether Sunday Boho um, 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 is um, brought back to Nigeria or not. What the strategy of strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter, has always been the same model that government is operating. And they've forgotten that when you strike the shepherd today, if the sheep scatter, what happens tomorrow? The sheep can decide to actually regroup and continue with whatever agitation. So if you do not kill the perceived injustice in the system, then we may just continue to have some of this crisis in the community. So for you, whether what, whichever way it goes today, it does not really address the core of what brought us to where we are as it, it is. It, it does not. And at the end of the day, don't let us lie to ourselves. Government will be the beneficiary in the entire process. Like we were saying off camera, mm. two things, like um, like my uh, Mr. That's Razak that. actually um, made clear at the very beginning. And I said two ways mm. that he talked about. At the end of the day, we favor the government. The first is that if Sunday Boho goes on the ground, that may mean a temporary suspension of the agitation temporary. Mm. Now they have so connected the neighboring communities that if he tries to go abroad, that's the major issue. If he goes abroad, the agitation may continue because he will continue to speak from the other side of the world. Which and government may not, may not really want. Mm. 
So, um, like we said, the right language is economic uh, benefit here and there. So, once the government, for example, speaks the right language of maybe opening the border wide of some concessions here and there, hmm. then the Beninese government will not have a choice. You know that majority of these countries around us depend heavily on our economy. So, at the end of the day, government will may be the greatest beneficiary in all this. Hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure it will all go well for the entire nation. Mm. Why yes. do you say that? Because a lot of agitations will come out of here. You see, don't let us lie. This is the first time for you if you've been um, a student of politics at least from 2000 and, um, 1999 to, ni to mm -hmm. now. This is the first time that the entire governors in the South are coming to speak one language irrespective of their political parties. APC members are there. PDP are there. Mm. So the first time everybody is concerned about the future of the country. But they will not come out. But Nigeria has got to a point now where no zone can afford not to have a person like Igboho. Because they think that some zones are actually loading over um, some other zones. So they may not come on television the same way I'm coming out to say oh, we are supporting Igboho. But dig deep into their heart. Dig deep into their heart. And you see whether they are supporting some of these agitations or not. They will not come out. He has been campaigning all over the community. He even got to a palace, I will not mention the name of the other, and he said he received a call from the governor, that money. He was in line. Mm. So, but these people will not be able to come out. But I tell you that this is the first time that even the governors are concerned. Yeah, we, we heard one of the governors, uh, I think over the weekend, saying that they are doing, some governors and individuals are doing things privately to see what can be done at the end of the day to addressing uh, this issue. But what language, uh, let me come to you, Razak, do you think that the government will be speaking now that might interest the Beninua government? So when it comes to election between two governments, they don't factor individuals. Mm. That's the bitter truth. When Kano was brought back to Nigeria, the whole question of whether Kano's right has have a right to move around the country was no longer brought on board. It was there for, the lawyer said it was there for seven days. And after being interrogated for seven days, confirmed whether it's part of a Shabab or not, it was brought back to Nigeria. Do you think if they had respected, they won't allow me to go back to UK? So, Nigeria will speak the language being government understand it. That's the basic truth now for some of our people in Yoruba land. We must know what we, the agitation is into so that we brace up for it. Mm. The language is that uh, you are a nation, I'm a nation. Will you want uh, your nation to go in pieces? Do you know the implication Nigeria will have if it goes into fire? Your, uh, the entire, so, so these are languages mm. that uh, nations will understand that, okay, I'm a nation. Even the British government they will tell them the implication of Nigeria breaking up. They will tell the uh, American implication of Nigeria breaking up. So it is left to the, move, the movement, the, its own organization, the both organization, to be able to analyze to a point where we convince the entire world that what I'm leading, the process I'm leading is genuine and is in the interest of Nigeria. And like, I, like we, we have always been saying that uh, all over the world, Nigeria is being combated with a, 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 a simultaneous security issue mm -hmm. that is all countries in the world are not witnessing it. We are witnessing terrorism, banditry, agitation for break, break, for, for break up, s men, only in Nigeria. And that's dangerous for so that when anything happens in Nigeria, there will be no capacity for Nigerian government to address it because it's going to be a multifaceted issue, crisis. Mm. Are you going to talk to s men? And the danger is that uh, if you push it further than this, Something bad may happen. I don't know which it When you happen. say push further than push, this, um, if, if you suspend, if the government delays the, doing the right thing further than this, if there are arms in all the regions already and people have the armor watching to, to move in at the right moment, Nigerian military are doing their best. They are dying every day. I watched a documentary on TV yesterday of our, our Nigerian soldiers, the one with amputated leg, the one who have lost one eye, and I felt I first so bad for, the, for our guys dying every day. And like my colleague have said, what do we do that is the right thing? There is no region... Treating it from the root. There is no region that is mm. not aggrieved. There is no region that is not aggrieved with Nigeria. So, I, I say that I'm, I am a poor bride person. The moral responsibility of telling the president, lie on us, who are a supporter. And what, what is it to do is that the president should profile his solutions to Nigerian problem. He has to repackage it. He has to understand that, will I be... Did I hate Mr. President? 
if I voted, will I have affected him? So anybody that is speaking the language I'm speaking, I didn't hate Mr. President. They just want him to see the truth. And for people who are surrounding him, particularly our security agent, the president must be able to scold them to profile any solutions properly for him. Any language about structuring. They profile in such a way that these are enemies of Mr. President. Nobody's an enemy of Mr. President. Mm -hmm. We are just saying that uh, we must run in Nigeria in such a way that it won't plot our president against us. The way we run Nigeria now, every Nigerian will hold our president responsible for calamity and what we are passing from. Okay, look at it from 1999. Tell me a president that is not being embarrassed out of office. Jonathan, Obasanjo, Yara Dua. Now it's come to Buhari now. The, more, the, 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 the kind of law people are for Buhari. The president should then understand that, that something is wrong with this system. Why is it that at the dead tail end of each administration, this is always the picture. Right. About some at the tail end, this is mm -hmm. the picture. Mm -hmm. Jonathan at the tail end, this is the picture. My own, this is the picture. You should know that there's something wrong with it. And like the rest of the world be looking at us, that some, nothing was out. You know how many people have British uh, visa, American visa? You know, we are the seventh most populated country in the world. So Absolutely. no country, that, that, that's the negotiation. Mm. No country will want to risk a Nigeria crisis being a republic will not want to risk and that's what they are weighing already that once the government speaks the, the language of okay weighing this okay if you if you don't want to do this what what can you what do for can us? You what do can you do for us? All right. so so we, our, it, it, it may not be a legal issue it's a political issue hmm. so right. the, the lawyer must speak more of a political language than, than being a legal, legal issue language all right finally your final word on this matter mm. my final word is i'm just going to take two components of character of leadership mm. which is a major concern for a major burden on this government. Character of leadership, uh, leadership the first C there, means care for all. That's carrying everybody along. Long. Ability to do um, for your enemy what you can do for your friend. Ability to do to your friend what you can do to your enemy. So carrying everybody along, I think this administration lacks that. The second component is humility. Humility is not the Dobale kind of thing that we know in Yoruba land. When it comes to the concept of leadership, humility is ability to take opinions that are not necessarily supporting you. This government has what I call political arrogance, that when people are talking solution, they think people are attacking them. And if we continue like this, I'm not sure we're going to get out of these issues. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, political analyst and rights activist Razaku Lukoba, as well as public affairs analyst Dotuanjo, thank you for speaking with us. It's a pleasure being with you.